Hey guys, finally back. Uh, we're here in the chop shop and today we're gonna do a q and I know a lot of you guys were asking me a heap of questions uh, through Instagram, Facebook and whatnot. So I uh, put a post on YouTube and said, you guys can ask me whatever you want and I'll make a video and answer them all. So here we go. Oh, as you can see, the zombie is here and it's got the big dishes on the back again. Pretty damn pumped that they're back on there. Anyway, let's get to these questions. We got some absolute freaking rippers in here. These questions are all over the place too, so I'm just gonna answer most of them. There's a few in there that I won't answer, but I'll explain why. All right, so the first question is actually like, wow, there's so many questions here. I'm gonna answer a few of these, not all of them, but these are from Zeke Davis 11. Uh, he's asked, what are your preferred alignment specs? Now, I'm actually gonna do an entire video on the alignment setup of this car in the coming weeks, because I ain't got no secrets. I tell people all the time what the specs are. Alignment is very important, don't get me wrong, but uh, yeah, I've got no secrets here. If Mine's a very simple setup, and then if you do need to change anything to suit the track, whether it's, you know, it comes down to tire wear for me. I try and get the most out of my tires on the rear, obviously. Uh, but yeah, I'll be doing a full video on that. He's also asked, what are some of my long-term goals? Not necessarily specific to drifting. That is a pretty damn good question. Uh, obviously, long-term goal is to have a self-sustainable drifting career. Uh, that's no longer working a day job that I don't really want to be working, if that makes sense. And literally living off drifting, and that means, you know, eventually buying a house, uh, running the whole business, through drifting, uh, whatever it is doing, I wanna be able to have a business that's involved in drifting and making money to live. And obviously, build a house, uh, do all the normal life things down the track, but always be involved with drifting, because I freaking love it. How long have I owned the Sonvia? That's a good question. I actually bought it 10 years ago, this year. Wow. What is my greatest drifting memory? To me, there's a, there's a few of them, honestly. There is quite a few of them. Uh, but obviously driving for Team Orange in Japan in D1GP, that was like a lifelong goal of mine. Uh, and managed to get that done pretty early, like 2012 I did that. Uh, and then also winning the China Drifting Championship. Uh, that was 2017, that was, that was pretty unreal. Uh, and doing Mad Mike's Drift Shifters in New Zealand in this thing. That was incredible. Uh, being a part of that event was just, ugh, so crazy. I wish I was doing these videos back then. My God. What's the biggest primary reason you'd never build a V8? 100% the sound. Just cannot stand it. What would it cost me to run Formula D USA in the RBM3? Now, a lot of you guys are gonna lose your mind over this, but I'm gonna tell you the truth. Can do it with a hundred grand, right? hundred grand I could, comf not comfortably, a hundred grand I could do it just, but it would be honestly not worth doing because everything would be on a shoestring budget. I'd be so freaking like paranoid and worried about anything breaking because then you, you're basically stuffed. Uh, so for me to get there, minimum 200 grand would be needed. Not even joking. 200 grand minimum. Uh, would you ever consider moving to the States? 100% yes. What do I do for a living? Okay, so I'm a qualified electrician. Uh, and like I said before, I don't want to be doing that for the rest of my life. I am trying to build my drifting career up to a point where I can sustainably live off of doing drifting or anything related to drifting. Uh, I even do guest speaking at some events. So. I do kind of enjoy that, even though it's so far out of my like comfort range, <laughs> I do end up enjoying it. Once you know, you're up there and you're flowing along, you're telling your story, it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, what's my dream job? That is, yeah, obviously drifting for a career. Have I ever tried to grow a rad mustache or beard? No, because it's all red. <laughs> No offense to Rangers, just saying. 
doesn't suit me. How much do I have to pay Bree to let the fro come back? Oh, I don't think money is going to let that come back. She's just put a full blanket no on the whole idea. <laughs> what are my thoughts on building a drift car? Keep it simple to get seat time or go all out and build your dream. Here in the States, a lot of people catch flack for overbuilding their drift car. Curious what your take is on that. Do what you freaking well want. Stuff what anyone else thinks, jeez. If I cared what anyone else think, I wouldn't have built that Beamer, that's for sure. But yeah, do what you want. Doesn't matter if it's low budget, high budget. If you can afford to do it, do whatever the hell you want. Just, yeah, do it. What type of suspension front and rear does the Sonvia run? That's a good question. Sonvia runs MCA suspension, but the Silver Series. And the Beamer runs the Red Series MCA suspension. Cats or dogs? Yeah, dogs. I don't like cats. Coke or Pepsi? I shouldn't have either, but sorry, gotta say Coke. What do I dislike most about living in Australia? If there is anything to dislike, jeez. Oh, Probably the fact that everything is so spread out. Like as you know, it takes me so long to get the power tune. It takes me so long to get to Queensland. Uh, but then in saying that, it's kind of cool to just sit on the road and have all that time to process and think about stuff. But no, Australia's too big. <laughs> what do I like most about living in Australia? Probably the weather and like not having all these crazy natural disasters. You gotta be honest, that's like, yeah, after being in that massive earthquake in Christchurch back in 2010 and 11, uh, yeah, that kind of, that hit me pretty hard. Your chances of a natural disaster here are so small is probably one of the Best things, I don't know, I guess. This one's not a question, but I'm stoked to meet you someday. Hopefully my RB Powered S13 will be up and running. For me to chuck around, no, that's not how it works. You gotta chuck around. I'll come there and go passenger or something. <laughs> Did I play any sports growing up? I played basketball. Did play a little bit of footy, but got over that real quick. And played a little bit of cricket, I suppose. Do you watch any sports? I love watching NBA, gotta be honest. And uh, AMA Supercross, that is the best. Those dudes, are, they gotta be the best athletes in the world, hands down. Apple or Android? See now, that's a tricky one. I got an Apple computer, but I got an Android phone. I'm a little bit, it's like 42 degrees today, so it's cooking in this shed right now. Sorry guys. Do you know how to weld or fabricate? If not, is that something you wish to do in the future? I, I have done a little bit of welding uh, at work, like if I need to make some brackets or whatever real quick. I have, yeah, done a little bit of TIGging, uh, done next to no MIG work at all ever. But yeah, for sure, if I find more time, I'd love to learn how to do that and start doing my own stuff because the best thing you can do is all your own work. That's, yeah, I'd love to. What was my scariest moment in drifting? All right, so there's been a few. Scariest moment in drifting in my career would have to be being in the earthquake in New Zealand, Christchurch, 2010. I'm pretty sure it was the end of 2010 or it was the start of 2011. Yeah, I know I wasn't in the car, but we're working on it. By far the scariest thing I've ever been through. Scariest moment in drifting. Probably my first ever lap. I went straight in the wall. <laughs> it was terrible. I had no idea what I was doing and yet understeered straight into the freaking wall. But there's been many crashes since then. Like I've, oh man, I've got some footage that I've never released before. Like I pretty much rode a super off in China. Not even joking. Almost rode this thing off. Got crashed into on this side actually. Uh, by a little Corolla in DA 2009, just when I got the thing. Oh, I've had all sorts of crashes and yeah, anyway, all sorts of nasty stuff's happened. Who was my biggest supporter in drifting in my earlier days? Uh, I suppose, like I was never given any money or anything like that, if that's what you're sort of asking, but biggest supporter, I guess, you know, if I wasn't at my 
dad's house living or if I was at my mum's house living because they were split, they always made sure I had a roof over my head and fed me. So if that wasn't happening, I definitely wouldn't be here today. So I've got to thank them for that. That's definitely a, you know, you've got to be grateful for that, that's for sure. What has been the highlight of my drifting career? Pretty sure you asked that earlier. What's like, what's the best thing? But yeah, the highlight was honestly building my BMW while I was going through an apprenticeship. That was a huge achievement and I honestly still don't know how I did it, but yeah, I got it done and it's unreal. <laughs> I freaking love that car. Okay, time to move on to the second person. But yeah, I probably should have limited it to only one question per person. But anyway, there's some good questions in there. So thanks heaps, Zeke Davis 11. Okay, we're on to rejected outcast now. He is asked, who in Australia do you think has a better style of driving? Cannot include myself because, okay, <laughs> no worries. Uh, Australia. Okay, so Bo Yates, definitely right up there. Uh, awesome driving style. Who else in Australia? I don't really watch much Australian drifting. That's really bad. Yeah, sorry. I guess Bo Yates is, yeah, definitely. There's a few others around. Uh, like some of the OG guys, like Lyndon Reynolds, Tom Monkhouse, those dudes, they got really sick driving styles. Um, but yeah, Boyo, it's definitely up there. Uh, what rear tires do I like and what PSI do I roughly run for the most grip? See now that's a huge, like, oof. you can't really answer that, but the tyres on there right now are Advan Neovas, and I'll run them probably down to 17 PSI in competition uh, if I really need to get grip. But if you're looking for smoke and still plenty of grip, about 26 pound, uh, anywhere up to 30 pound, and then they really start chuffing. They, they're, they're sick tyres. It's getting windy. And he's also asked, with an RB20, what's a bulletproof setup? I got no idea. Never owned an RB20, but there's plenty of info online, and I've seen plenty of drifts. RB20s last forever, You're just in stock form. But uh, yeah, thanks for your questions, man. Uh, on to the next question from Dennis Burns. He's asked for what's or yeah. He's asked what is my favourite track, local and overseas, and who's my favourite overseas driver. Uh, so favourite track locally. I'm guessing you mean in SA, would have to be Metal Arts, the only one I've driven on, I haven't driven on the new one yet. Overseas, I'd probably have to say, honestly, Taupo. Even though I was in a different car, uh, Taupo New Zealand was, that was sick. That was, from what I remember, it was like nine years ago now, but the elevation changes and everything was, yeah, that made that track, that was wicked. But yeah, I've done, Done a lot of like car park stuff overseas and so on, so they're not really tracked, so I won't, won't include that sort of stuff. Uh, and yeah, favorite overseas driver, uh, as a whole, like, it easily be Mike Widett, hands down. On to the next question. Intel Echo HD has asked, why don't you have any sort of cheap practice car? The Sonvia and the RBM3 must be pretty expensive. You're dead right, they are ridiculously expensive, but uh, yeah, I've just never really had probably the room and spare money to just go and get a practice car. Uh, even though I do spend so much on these cars, uh, I'd just rather drive these to be honest, but there might be something coming in the works there, so stay tuned. On to the next one, Muffy Man. <laughs> He's asked, what's my dream chassis and engine? It's the RBM3 and I've built it, but as for the next one, I'm not going to tell you because you have to wait and see. Art Damage Zero has asked what happened with the Squid Shack. I'm not going to delve into that. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I'm not going to answer that one. Jasper S has asked, do you have any other passions other than drifting? I suppose I'm really keen to get better at video editing. Uh, I'd like to do a lot more cooler stuff, if that makes sense. But I don't really have time to have any other passions, I guess. 
I don't, oh yeah, I don't play video games or anything like that, if that's what you're asking. I used to when I was a kid, but man, I would not know how to play anything these days. I'd be useless. Uh, Ryan has also asked, what's my favorite hobbies outside of driving? To be honest, I, yeah, it's just video editing. That's pretty much all I do. And then obviously work. James Whitworth has asked the ETA on the new trailer. Uh, now this is a very good question. So with the new trailer, they ended up having a customer that really urgently wanted a trailer. Uh, in my situation, it wasn't it wasn't like urgent, it wasn't really needed straight away. So I basically said to him, look, if you want to sell it to the, another customer and we focus on my trailer down the track, yeah, sweet, happy to do it. So they ended up selling it to another, another person. So that trailer will be eventually coming down the track. Okay, on to the next question, JR. Everyone else has asked some pretty good questions. So what do you do for work? I'm a brickie. Hashtag brick life. <laughs> and when are we going to see some sick skids or you should do an edit of some old footage of yourself and friends? Uh, as I said earlier, I'm a qualified electrician, industrial electrician, work at a winery in Brossa Valley. And as for the videos, there'll be a heat coming soon. Uh, we're just finalizing a few things at the start of this year. And obviously you still got to put the MoTeC in the Sombia, so stay tuned, it won't be long, promise. But for now, you might have to go back on some old footage that's on YouTube. <laughs> Sorry, man. Okay, next question. Jake Ferriman. He's asked, who, what was your inspiration for getting into driving and how young did you start? So the first thing I seen was a D1GP option DVD at a friend's house. His older brother was actually watching it and it was Ken Namura was drifting around his car park and they just had, it was so old, it would have been, I don't know if it was like Odaiba or something like that, but it would have been like one of the first D1 events they probably did in the car park. And I just couldn't get over this thing going sideways around a track and it just, and then when two of them went together, it just blew my mind and I just wanted to know everything about it. So from that day forward, I was just hooked and um, yeah, ended up going to an event in freaking Thailand the other week. And me and Ken Demura judging together. <laughs> it's freaking nuts. Oh, God, I love drifting. Oh, and sorry, Jake also asked how young did I start? I started when I was 19. Uh, so I pretty much saved up from when I quit school at 14, 15 years old. Uh, got a job as a truck washer. And yeah, just worked as hard as I could for as long as I could. Got enough money, got my first car. And yeah, the rest is history. Okay, on to the next one, Jeffrey Hoskins has asked, Hey Squid, I have wanted to make a vid on the build of my own drift car, but not sure how to start. What tips do you have? Cheers. Just start. It's that simple. Doesn't matter how you film it, what you say, just start doing it. Because the biggest regret you're going to have is not doing just that. Like I've only grown a small amount on YouTube. Like I'm not even fussed about it. I mean, yeah, it's awesome. I appreciate you guys subscribing and watching all these videos, but at the end of the day, it's, it's the best thing is when people like send me a message or comment on the video and say, look, I've, it's been years since I've got back in the shed. Just watch your vid. It's motivated me to get my car going. That's the whole point. It's, it's just, you know, I know how hard it is to get motivation out there. And what if what I'm doing is getting you guys out there in the shed, that's, that's amazing. And, and also for me, when I'm an old fossil, I can look back on all these videos and look at what I used to do. So it's a win-win. Just get out there and start doing it. There's no right, there's no wrong way. Just seriously, just start doing it. Spoon Gina has asked, Yo Squid, did you have a brother called Gav that drives a truck? No, I did not. And I still don't. <laughs> Definitely not have a brother called Gav. I've got two brothers, one called Colby, one called Trent, and then I've got a younger sister called Nikia. So, and he's also asked what happened with the Squid Shack, so many good times. Also, if an illegal, oh wow, yeah, I'm not saying that. <laughs> Sorry, man. Uh, but yeah, like I said, with the Squid Shack, I'm, I'm not gonna discuss that. Sorry, guys. Uh, Ashley Weaver 
Are you doing drift demos at the Adelaide 500 this year? I sure hope so. I sure hope so as well, but uh, nothing can be said about that just yet, sorry. Uh, next question, Travis3. Okay, I have a few. Are you still hoping to come to FD someday and what exactly is going on with that? Uh, to be honest, yes. I badly want to get to America. Uh, I'm going to go there this year to have a look. That's got to happen. Has to happen. Whether it's round one or the last round, I'm going there. I'm going to catch up with Rad Dan. Uh, I've also talked to Nate Hamilton. Um, I'm going to try and catch up with heaps of guys, the Hoonigan guys. Uh, I'll try and catch up with Josh as well, Josh Robinson, the other Aussie over there. And yeah, Forsberg, Turek, like I'm just going to try and catch up and just soak in as much as I can of everything that happens up there. Uh, it'd be awesome to meet, you know, even Chelsea, Denofa, um, Caleb, who's always working with him now, and even, you know, uh, seeing TJ Hunt's operation, Adam LZ's. Yeah, I'll try and get there and just do as much as I can. But um, as for getting there and doing the whole program, it's definitely not going to happen this year. Uh, but you never know what could happen next year. So I'm always pushing for it. Travis3 has also asked, are twins ever worth it? I'm assuming you mean twin turbos. Probably not. Uh, he's also asked, do you have any recommended reading for someone who's making their own angle kits and suspension arms? I have no clue. Sorry, Travis. Not gonna lie, zero clue. Okay, Infected has asked, how did I start out as a drifter? I saved a lot of money, bought a car that was ready, a drift car, took it to the track, watched heaps of videos on how to drift, thought I could tackle it pretty well, went straight in the wall. <laughs> Rebuilt the car, kept going. Just didn't stop, just kept going. Kept going the track, kept trying to learn, and yeah, just never give up. Okay, on to the next one, Shay Small. On to the next question, Shay Small. We know you want to make it to FD, do you think you'll make it in the next couple of years? Uh, and if you do make it stateside, will you be doing Pro 2? So, long story short, obviously want to make it there, like I said before. Uh, but if I do get there, I want to go straight to Pro. Uh, I'd love to, you know, do Pro 2, work my way up, but I've got the license to do Pro, so why not just go straight in the deep end? I don't know, some people might take that the wrong way and be like, nah, man, you got to work your way up, but... Yeah, I suppose uh, I just want to go all in. <laughs> Simple. Uh, Shay Small also asked, are you planning on releasing a schedule for your plans for 2019? Uh, or are you going to make us wait and see? Now, I don't want to make you wait, and I really do want to release what I'm doing this year, but we've still got a few things we're trying to sign off on uh, before I can release everything. So just bear with me a couple more weeks Hopefully, start a fair bike and release the whole year. And uh, yeah, we can go from there. It's, it's gonna be good. No matter what happens with everything coming up in the next few weeks, it's gonna be crazy, no matter what. Shay Small also said, I know it's been said multiple times, but are you coming back to NZ? Yes, I'm coming back. When that is, I'm not too sure just yet, but it will be this year, I'll be back. D Cow has asked, do you consider the extended crank collar 100% necessary along with the N1 oil pump and steel gears? Yes, I think it is a must. If you have a crank that doesn't have the extended snout, yeah, get the extended crank collar. Uh, N1 oil pump, steel gears is bloody good. Okay, on to the next one. 911X, oh man. He's got seven questions, but at least he's numbered them. Thank you. Here's the first one. I've heard some person speaking about the limits of the chassis. If I recall correctly, ZP Drift parted out his R33 to build an S15. Uh, he's freaking sick, by the way. Can you shed some light into the limits of the chassis you've driven? Yeah, I don't think I've reached any limits in any chassis yet. I've got to be honest. So I can't, sorry, I can't really answer that question. Number two. I know this is probably for the upcoming video, but I'm extremely curious to know why you switch from the sequential to the dog box in terms of cost and maintenance. 
yes, I'm going to be doing a full video on that and it's going to be good. Uh, don't get me wrong, both options are great, but I chose the H pattern for a few reasons, but I'll explain that in another video so no one gets any miscommunications or whatnot. That's coming. Okay, question number three. What sort of RPM would you like to see full boost by in terms of both with running the turbo on pump gas with not, well, without nitrous or high octane fuel and running nitrous and high octane fuel? Long story short, I don't care when the turbo kicks in. If it's not kicking in yet, I just give it a clutch kick. That's what I've done with any car I've ever driven. Uh, yeah, if there's too much lag, you just gotta give it another kick. So I've never actually used nitrous in my life. Number four, any experience with budget turbos outside of the usual Garrett or Warner Precision? Sorry, mate, I've never used any budget turbos, any eBay stuff. Uh, I just got to stick with the brands that support drifters. That's that's my philosophy. I, yeah, any company that you know pours in heaps of money to keep drifters going, I'm going to support them before anyone else. Number five, more on alignment specs. Uh, especially with setting up the wise fab that's in the rbm3 guys i don't have that in this one uh, maybe even do a separate video like i said earlier i will be doing another video uh, on alignment setups and what i do with the sombia the beamer is honestly so straightforward it's insane literally bolt the kit in set up your toe and you're off there's nothing tricky there at all okay number six uh, any tips or tricks you've learnt on how to dial more gripping between the Sonvia and the Beamer? Perhaps a few differences. Okay, I'll give you one difference straight up before you know. obviously make the video. Sonvia, if you go softer with the shocks, it gets grippier. You do that with the Beamer, he's hiding over there, it actually gets slipperier. So the harder the shock is on the Beamer, the grippier it gets because it's heavier. So there's a little difference for you. But there is a full video coming of that. I'll make that eventually. Oh yeah, so one last question from Div911X, number seven. Would you say there's a limit in terms of horsepower and or torque as to when street tires can be used before upgrading sticky tires? Mm, yeah, probably like 350 kilowatts at the wheels. Maybe less, maybe like 300 kilowatts. I'm not even joking. Like street tires are still grippy. If you get the right ones, of course. But yeah, like I'll put street tires on the Beamer and it goes nowhere, literally goes nowhere. Okay, next question, WKRX. It's raining and it's really loud. You guys probably cannot hear me, but I'll start yelling. Uh, he has asked, why RB28 over a 3032? Simply for the revs, mate, that's all I want. I just want lots of RPM. Uh, I don't care about lag, power, any of that sort of stuff. I just wanted heaps of RPM, and that's what Power Tune got me. Okay, this dude's Japanese, and I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm really sorry, because uh, it's in Japanese. What's your opinion about Indonesian Drifter? How much cost for built your RBM3, and what the biggest problem when you built RBM3? I Freaking love that car. Thanks, buddy. My opinion about Indonesian drifters, I've only ever come across a Mandio, and uh, yeah, like he's a good dude. We've had heaps of battles in China. Um, yeah, that's the only one I've come across. Like, obviously did some drifting over there with a few more of them, but it wasn't heaps of tandem battles or anything. But yeah, they're all good. They don't talk much, but Think that's what he wants or you want me to tell you the skill level of them because they're bloody skillful anyway they're good uh how much does it cost to build my rbm3 well i should have bought my first house but instead i built my dream car so whatever your first home is worth that's probably what it's worth I'm not gonna lie biggest problem with it biggest problem was getting bmw parts for it for me anyway and then yeah trying to get it ready while you know still drifting so yeah that was the hardest thing. I couldn't drift anymore, I had to stop. So I could finish it, that sucked. But look at the end result, it's good. Okay, thanks for those questions, mate. On to the next one. Luke Thor, I'm not even gonna pronounce your last name, I'm sorry, man. He's asked, without being rude, invade privacy, 
we would love to get the lowdown on what happened with the enclosed trailer and your partnership. Uh, also the Squid Shack debacle. Cheers, love your stuff, mate, and keen to see what the future holds for you. Cheers, Luke. Uh, like I said about the trailer earlier, that's what happened there. Uh, and with the Squid Shack, I don't really want to go into that. It's like, it's nothing bad. It's just personal, sorry. Okay, on to the next question from Joshua Lee Hills. Hey Jake, after watching you for years, I've decided I want to get into drifting. What's the best way to get on track as a beginner? I've looked for learned days or something like that. Uh, I've never been on track, question mark. Okay, depending where you are, there's heaps of drift schools now. Uh, Sydney, Victoria, I think there might be one starting up in SA. I'm not too sure about that. But yeah, I, oh, there's one in WA as well. Uh, but yeah, plenty of drift schools to attend if you want to get the feel of it, see if it's for you. Yeah, there's heaps of things to do uh, nowadays. You guys are pretty spoiled. So seriously, just spend five, 600 bucks on a drift day and you'll probably master it in that one session. Who knows? Or you might hate it. So uh, thanks for watching though, Josh. I appreciate it. Fory Time has asked, would you ever do a barra swap? Nope. <laughs> Sorry. S. Welsh, are you going to Power Cruise at Eastern Creek this year? That would be awesome. Yes, it would be freaking awesome. Uh, it's not on my current schedule, but that could change. I'm not going to say I'm going to make it because you know, realistically, I probably can't, uh, but I'd love to. I really would. Uh, next question Jeffo, what's your main reason you got into drifting? Uh, what do I think of V8 supercars? Oh, okay, so he's got three questions. What was your main reason you got into drifting? It was just because it looked so abnormal, I needed to try it. Uh, what do you think of V8 supercars? I do like them. I like how even everything is. Uh, but I must admit the Red Bull and Shell team, they're kind of like at a different level now. Uh, and everyone else, all the the back runners, it's, it's really hard for them to sort of keep up, but I, I enjoy watching it, not gonna lie. Uh, do I support an AFL team? <laughs> nah, sorry man. Okay, next question, Brody Anderson. Are you going to do D1NZ in 2020? <laughs> I so badly want to. I really seriously want to. Jacob Peck. Oh, he's a YouTuber. I know you. I actually just stumbled across you the other day and watched a couple of your vids. I love you. I think it was a JZX90 you got. I think sick. Okay, he's asked, favorite international and Australian YouTubers? Well, the Aussie one's gotta be you, mate, for sure. And uh, favorite international YouTuber? Oh, I suppose he's left this open to anyone, but I was hooked on the like everyone would have been Casey Neinstadt vlogs. They were like the old ones. They were freaking, I don't know, just kept drawing me in. Kind of pissed me off because I was sucking so much time out of my life. Yeah, Caleb Quambach was good. I think that's how you say his last name. But he's gone to guns and stuff, not so much drifting at the moment, but he'll get back into it, I hope. Uh, Chelsea uh, and Lone Star videos, they're always good, uh, but you never have enough time to watch them all, seriously. Like, I'm, <laughs> I watch more motivational stuff now than anything. Like, I'll play that instead of music. Don't judge me. <laughs> All right, next question. Frank Zane. Sonvia engine specs. It's all on my website, man. The whole list is all there. So just go to www.driftsquid.com. Pick the Sonvia or the Beamer. Whole list of parts is there. Thank me later. Okay, he's also asked for front and rear. How... You setting proper setting suspensions and chamber angle, not camber. Please more update and review your Sonvia because my project this year, RB25 A31 body, maybe engine spec build like your Sonvia. Okay, there's a video coming about the suspension and there's a lot of information out there about the Sonvia and its engine, but there'll be heaps more coming. So if, yeah, stay tuned, Frank, there's heaps coming, mate. Okay, next question, Goonbag Warrior. What a name. He's asked, ideal daily, that's not boring for Australian roads given laws and harsh surfaces. 
was the S earning ever a streetcar? Oh, guess what? It still has rego. <laughs> Not even joking. So technically it still is a streetcar. And ideal daily, God. I want an F truck so bad. That's me. But um, I'd love a four door R34. I really would. That would be wicked. Like, that I could reach and, and obtain in the next couple of years, but dream daily, 34 GDR, hands down. I want one so bad. The power tune one, the blue one, is oh, everything I want in a GDR. That thing is incredible. Okay, next question, Sam Powers. Tips for anyone wanting to get into low competition drifting at a relatively low budget. If you're in Victoria, Vic Drift is amazing. If you're in SA, the SA drifting series is amazing. WA have a cheap like drifting series. Sydney, I don't think they do. Maybe high tech are running like a amateur class now. I don't know, but there's heaps, heaps of events you can get into, dude. That are low budget, like street tires, limited to two, three, fives, all that sort of stuff. You can get them tires for like sixty bucks now. So yeah, there's heaps of ways of doing it. Just got to do a bit of searching. Look on Facebook, there's always stuff coming up. So on to the next question, this is Alfonso. He's asked what my setup's gonna be for 2019 on the RBM3. Uh, it will stay as is, looking wise, uh, but there's a few things changing on it. Next question, Lachlan Matthews, coming to Autumn Drift Matsuri at QR in 2019. I hope so, I really hope so. I can't say that I am, but honestly, I've badly want to get there so that wraps up all the questions guys can't thank you all enough yeah believe it or not that was 35 people but a lot of them asked a few questions so i hope this video didn't drag out too long uh and you obviously enjoyed all those questions getting answered yeah you can just admire this on video now Alright guys, so coming up soon, we got the MoTeC getting changed into this thing and all the HowTech gear is going to be up for sale. So if anyone does want that, just uh, yeah, hit me up and I'll be doing some pretty good prices on getting rid of that stuff. Yeah, I'm going to be doing a little bit of stuff outside of drifting coming up, so I might be a little bit quiet. Sorry about that, but I will be like full steam ahead come February. So bear with me, there's heaps happening this year, I promise. I'm just trying to tie a few things up and, uh, and get ready for the season. So, thanks heaps guys. Uh, so thankful you're all watching. Obviously, super thankful you guys sent all those questions in. That was pretty cool to be honest. And uh, yeah, we'll do another Q&A later on in the year. For now, let's just uh, let's focus on getting some cool content out there. All right guys, thanks heaps for that. And uh, we'll see you next time.